Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Perhaps you've already guessed by my chosen t-shirt or the Technicolor thumbnail, it's going to get a bit bright today. So if you are colour sensitive, you can turn down the brightness on your mobile phone or your monitor now. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Comet Chronograph, a watch that launches on Kickstarter in a couple of hours time. Indeed, this video is timed to coincide with that. If you're interested in this one, it gives you a chance to have a good look at it on camera in glorious Technicolor before making your decision. You also get the chance to pick one up at the early bird prices and that's the price that I'm going to be reviewing it on the basis of today. Now, full disclosure. This video is sponsored by Comet. They are keen for me to show you their wares in advance of their campaign so you can have a good look at it. What have we got today then? Well, it's a quartz chronograph with a beautiful dial available in quite a wide variety of colours. If you're thinking Dan Henry 1939 but with a bit more pizzazz, you're thinking in the right direction. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. I honestly wasn't kidding when I talked about a wide variety of colours and this is just some of them. Let's start with a quick look at that Kickstarter campaign then. Like I said, this one goes live in a couple of hours time. Early bird pricing from 199 US dollars, so that's the price that I'm going to base my thoughts and judgments on today. Now, Comet are founded by a gentleman called Bavin, and it's an interesting story of where he got the inspiration for this one. As you can see, there's a Pierce chronograph that he found on eBay one day, but it was $1,400. So he's not the first to use this methodology to resurrect an old retro design. I mentioned Dan Henry in the introduction. Kyle from Stratton is also a master of this, resurrecting dead chronographs from the dim and distant past. Seven different colour options to choose from, plus there are three stretch goals, so you may well end up being able to choose from 10 different colours altogether. A little further down, there's some dimensions and specifications. I'm going to run through all of that with you today anyway. Case inspiration coming from an old Jaeger. As you can see, they're very similar in terms of the dimensions, the pusher layout, etc. Now, the main expense of this watch, Bavin has told me how much of his own money he has put into this project so far, I'm not going to tell you. Suffice to say, you could have bought a very nice car with the amount of money that he spent, so I do hope this one does well. I wish him all the best. The dial is by far and away the most expensive component here. Seven different colours on each dial, 13 different layers of paint. You can imagine how long that takes and how much that costs just to produce each of those lovely little dials. Let's have a look at them in some detail then. Now, it's important to note that these five that I have in front of me are prototypes. Uh, Bavin has changed the dial company since then. So what you can see here is representative of the patterns and the color tones, but the quality should be even better from his new dial manufacturer. So I'm gonna start with dimensions and specifications. There is a whiff of loom on those hands, so I'll show you a loom video, and then we'll get some of these on wrist. So 42 and a half millimeters in diameter, 13 and a half mil thick, 48 mil lug tip to lug tip, 22 millimeter lug width, and on the supplied Horween leather strap, it should be noted, this one weighs in at a mere 46 grams. One of the benefits of using a quartz movement is not a lot of weight on wrist. So 316L stainless steel case, crown, smooth bezel, and those pushers in the case back is also made of stainless steel. It's a K1 hardened mineral crystal. So you don't get a sapphire crystal, but it is a nice piece of domed mineral crystal on there. And as noted, a Horween top grain leather Chicago strap. Quite a simple stainless steel screw in case back. So five atmospheres of water resistance, which is pretty much fine. Uh, probably a little better than I would have expected for a quartz chrono. Chronograph, Comet Chronograph there, 316 stainless steel advertising that it contains a Miota 6S 11 quartz movement. Let's talk about that while we look at the dial. The case finishing on these prototypes is all as it should be. Mixture of high polished and brushed. We've got a high polished smooth bezel and a nice fine horizontal brush on that mid case. High polished tips to those two chrono pushers and the unsigned crown. Now Bavin argues that the unsigned crown means it's just like the chronos of the 1940s. That's his story and he's sticking with it. 
But these watches aren't about the crowns, they really are all about these lovely dials. I like this one, I think the best of the ones that I've got to show you today. I think this is the most complicated looking of them as well. Two different greens, we've got a red there, arrow, we've got an orange, there's white, there's black. You can see why it takes 13 layers of printing and quite a considerable expense to come up with a dial as pretty as that one. So Miota 6S11, stated accuracy of plus or minus 20 seconds per month, battery life of four years, so you're not gonna be taking that case back off all that often. 60 minute chrono timer, you can see that's the sub dial at 12. We've got a small seconds ticking away there above the six. Starting and stopping the chrono with the pusher up there at the two o'clock, 60 minute chrono timer, as I said. Four ticks of this chrono hand per second. So you do get some of the look and the feel of a mechanical chronograph, but with the accuracy and the reliability of a quartz movement. One push to stop and one push to reset, and it's got that gentle flyback rather than a snapback, which is always nice to see. So let's bring out the macro lens and a few of these other colorways and have a look at all that printing on the dial. As I said, this one really is about the dial. One to five and then seven to 11 printed in vintage style Arabics. I do like this black one, super retro with that kind of old radium style printing, though it should be noted that the Arabics on the dial are not loomed. Tachymeter running around the outer edge. There's also a concentric telemeter in the middle there, just near the Comet logo, Comet logo above the pinion, chronograph just below it, and anti-magnetic, though I believe that is just for show above the small seconds at six o'clock. Look, you can calculate time and distance using the tachymeter and telemeter, but I don't think anybody is gonna be buying this watch to do serious calculations with, but it's there if you can be bothered learning how to. Like I said, all printing on these prototypes is very nice indeed, which bodes well for production models if Bavin's convinced that the new dial manufacturer is a step up in terms of quality and finishing. And the one with the brushed metal inner circle really does add a little touch of something else as well. Very nice. And I did say there was just a little bit of loom on those hands. Obviously these are prototypes and you never quite get the same loom effect on a prototype as you do on a production unit. It would have been nice if they had loomed those Arabics, but I understand that would not have worked given the number of different dial colors and the paint on those Arabics as well. So hey, some loom is better than no loom. All right, let's start getting some of these on wrist and you can see how they wear. 48 and a half mil lug tip to lug tip is fine. Just a touch of curvature at the edges of the lugs there. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. 42 and a half, I wouldn't want this to be any bigger than it currently is. I think it would begin to look a little too large, but as it stands, it's just about right. 22 mil lug width, I think a good choice, proportionate with that dial diameter and the big case diameter. It really is all dial, this one, minimal bezel there, so nice big surface area on the dial. The creamy yellow color dial with those jet black sub dials and that black stitched leather strap is another colorway that I'm sure will be popular with many in the campaign. Spearmint green perhaps not going to be to everyone's taste. There is something a little bit ye olde medicinal about this particular colorway, I think. Or if you want something a little more conservative, that's a proper top-down shot to give you an idea of scale, how it looks on wrist. There's the conservative looking black one with that chestnut colored brown strap. And here's a few of the different colorways out in some natural light. You do get a little bit of reflection and a little bit of distortion from that K1 mineral crystal. It's kind of box dome, so it's quite legible from the top. Just when you turn the watch at an angle, you get that little rim of distortion around the edges, but it's still quite legible. Interesting diamond shaped handset there, but with syringe tips. I do like the hands, the hour hand just pushing beyond the telemeter and the minute hand pushing all the way out to the tachymeter markings on the edges. And that's one of them sitting on my wrist. As I said, it does wear quite big and quite flat, but it's very light to balance that out. Moons and niggles. Well, it's not exactly a spec monster, is it? K1 mineral crystal, 50 meters of water resistance and a, a basic quartz Miota movement. 199, I think though, is still pretty reasonable value considering the complexity of the dial and that Horween strap. Also the unsigned crown and the, the unsigned buckle, I guess, again, you can get away with those saying that they're period features and that's just how they were in the 1940s. I think Bavin is aiming this one squarely at the Dan Henry 1939. He even says pretty much as much in the Kickstarter campaign. That and Undone are the two 
Quartz Chronos that he's basing this one at. At $199, if you get on the early bird, that's $20 cheaper than the Dan Henry, so I can see the sense in this one. If you find a dial color that resonates with you, that floats your boat, then I think it's a very pretty, nicely done little watch. So there you have it, the Comet Chronograph. I wish Bavin and the team behind this one well. Like I said, he could have bought a very nice car rather than bring this watch to all of you. So I do hope it's a success. And I think it will be. Great attention to detail on the dial. And like I said, the dial has been upgraded from the ones that I get to show you. Very, very nice indeed. I do like this style. I do like the idea somebody resurrects a watch from the past that they like but they can't find enough of, modernizes it, new materials, brings it to market at an affordable price. Not exactly a spec monster, 200 plus dollars for K1 mineral crystal and a basic quartz movement is not setting the world alight in terms of value. But I think if you're looking to add a bit of color to your collection and you like the idea of a kind of retro chrono but with modern internals that isn't going to break down in a hurry, Comet have certainly got you covered with these. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.